and then you measure this um, time resolved uh, event. So temporal resolution depends on the gate pulse. So it's 100 femtosecond, around 100 femtoseconds or so. It's, it's very fast may, way of uh, measuring. Uh, then you, once you generate the signal, up conversion signal, you block the fluorescence, you block the gate pulse, and you actually additionally use a prism to filter it, this wavelength out, uh, and you detect it with the detector. So it's a you, you what you measure is you measure only one uh, wavelength at a time. And as you can understand, the fluorescence is, is not really intensive usually. Uh, so you have really low uh, signal and it's not so easy to match uh, this fluorescence and gate pulse uh, on the crystal and to make sure that, you know, to get this up conversion signal. Yeah. yeah. The other way of uh, time resolved fluorescence is doing a corrugating. Uh, so we have this uh, similar setup. You just add a polarizer and analyzer before the sensor. And if you have this fluorescence uh, and care medium is not, uh, doesn't have a gate pulse, the polarization will remain the same and you will uh, not register any signal. But once you match your fluorescence with the gate pulse in time, gate pulse comes at a 45 degrees angle compared to a polarizer. And the polarization is at 45 degrees. Uh, and then in a care medium, uh, it, uh, it shifts the polarization of the fluorescence but only when the gate pulse is present because care effect is, is also very fast. So then you have this uh, way of uh, measuring time resolved fluorescence. And the resolution uh, is a little bit lower than fluorescence subconversion. It's about 400, 500 femtoseconds, but it has the advantage that you measure complete spectrum in one shot. And yeah, and then it's, easy to align because you just align in space uh, the signal, fluorescent signal and it signal uh, once and you have the system ready. Once if you have this fluorescence up conversion, it takes more time to align. So now let's see uh, the same examples. DCM die measured in up conversion method. So it was, uh, the gate pulse was 1030 nanometers, it's a terbium line. Uh, it requires about 20 microjoule of the fundamental, measured at 100 kilohertz, pumped at 430. So it's the same as it was with the time correlated single photon counted method, counting method. But now, instead of seeing the peak or at uh, 100 picoseconds, we see that it's actually an order of magnitude, two orders of magnitude shorter process. So you actually see that it peaks at around 900 uh, femtoseconds. So this, you can also see that uh, the wavelength at which uh, which we measure up conversion wavelength is around 375. Uh, then we use a calculator to check that fluorescence wavelength, uh, well, according to fluorescence wavelength. Uh, what is also nice is that uh, the measurement is, is really, has very good temporal resolution and you can see uh, the red shift uh, which hap which happens over time. So it's initially the majority of abs uh, absorption peak uh, is at 590 nanometers, but uh, it uh, af after this time, it, after two picoseconds, it redshifts to around 615 nanometers. Yeah. And then it's uh, like 
everything you know, happens relatively slowly, so there's no point in, in measuring a longer delay here. And now the same die measured with the corrugating. Conditions are the same, everything is the same, but the time resolution is a little bit uh, lower. So we don't see as expressed redshift as we saw in fluorescent subconversion method, but you still you can still indicate it. Yeah, so the, we measured that instrument response function and depicted it here. So it's uh, it's about uh, 500, uh, 400, 500 uh, femtoseconds. Yeah, so this is uh, a little bit easier way of uh, doing time resolved uh, fluorescence. Okay, so let's go to one more way of doing uh, uh, ultra fast spectroscopy. So to make matter more complex, you can add a thread beam. Uh, so you can have this situation when you pump your sample, and then after a certain time, you hit it with another beam, uh, which can cause to the sample to be repumped. So you can measure the higher energy levels, or it can cause this sample to be dumped. If you actually uh, shine at the sample with the same wavelength at which, it, at which it emits the light, you stimulate the light and then it's the sample just dumps all the energy and stops the reaction. So for such a method, you need another delay line. So this is uh, called a thread beam. Uh, you also obviously need uh, another OPA. So you need to have two OPAs to do it. Yeah. And then yeah, you can see the example here. It's the same DCM die. Well, it's, uh, it's fast, so it's interesting to study. Uh, so you can see that this, this first spectrum here uh, is a regular pump probe. But on the right spectrum, we add the dump pulse, which is at uh, around 700 nanometers. And you can see that the blue light shows that it emits the light. The absorption is uh, negative, so it emits the light at 700 nanometers. So if we hit at uh, this uh, sample, DCM sample, 21 picosecond, it's time delay with the 21 picosecond. We can stop the reaction which was happening inside of the DCM. So you, this graph on the right shows the difference of absorption from the first graph. So it means that after the sample receives dumb pulse, the absorption which was present at uh, 500. Uh, 15 nanometers or so is decreasing. And uh, the emission is, since it was uh, dumped uh, with, the, with the same wavelength, is also decreasing. So these states are interconnected. So what's uh, interesting, as you can see, like from, even from this graph, you can see that it's uh, inherently more noisy because you compare the difference in absorption with, an, with itself, like in a different state. So it's more noisy. So for this, you need a really stable uh, laser pulses and very stable continuum. Uh, but, it, but this opens up your new possibilities. So you can study the charge transfer states. You can study torsional relaxation and high en energy excitons of same polymers. Uh, another way of uh, doing three beams is you can have the third beam not uh, femtosecond but uh, picosecond beam. Picosecond is of narrow bandwidth, so you can have this stimulated Raman scattering. Uh, what how experiment goes? There's a, like, a, yeah, the, the method is called the femtosecond stimulated Raman scattering. 
So how it goes? So you excite the, so you, the sample with a femtosecond beam, and then you can measure this uh, Raman spectrum of your sample excited state, which is uh, a very nice uh, thing to study rotational vibrational dynamics. So at first, you your sample had arrives the femtosecond beam. It's called the actinic pump. And then you have narrow band with the picosecond beam, which causes Raman pump. And the third beam is a femtosecond uh, probe beam, which uh, yeah, which records the Raman spectrum, on which the Raman spectrum is recorded. Yeah. So during yeah, so this measurement you. The data that you acquire the probe beam is, is uh, the signal is red shifted. Yeah, so you measure it at longer wavelengths. Um, an example is shown here. So this is FSRS dynamics of uh, one of the beta carotene molecules, neoxantin. Uh, so you can see the measured uh, ground state absorption, ground state uh, absorption, ground state uh, Raman. Uh, but then you can also measure the excited state and you can measure the development of uh, how it develops. So this allows you capturing uh, vibrational rather than electronic dynamics. Uh, which is more interesting and allows better understanding of the reaction. Okay. Oh yeah. So now we can go to the uh, the instrument itself. So I've covered like everything, all the add-ons that do, are available with the Harpy ATA, and we can just go through the instrument, how it looks, and uh, and how it works. Wait a moment. Hmm. Yeah, happens all the time when you want it to. Uh, to show the video, it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, can you try once again, about us? Can you click the video link once, please? Okay. I tried clicking a few times, but first maybe I'll try this. Well, okay. Okay, so. Um, I will show it uh, afterwards uh, in a different, uh, or maybe, yeah, for some reason it, uh, it stopped working. Okay, but that's not a problem. Like I will show you the, how the system in tunnel looks uh, afterwards. Uh, do you still see my slides? Yes, by the test. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then I will just you can can go through the system how it looks. So it includes a femtosecond laser. It can be ytterbium based or it can be titanium sapphire based femtosecond laser. Then you need to have in the system a tunable wavelength, which is provided by an OPA. Here you see this laser integrated OPA. Some external beam routing. Uh, to the from the external beam routing from the OPA to Harpia. Laser fundamental is also split here. So we have around 20 microjoules of laser fundamental to generate continuum. We have the tunable wavelength, it all enters the Harpia. Here you can see this uh, sample area, which has a separate lid to easily access your sample and then close it when you do the measurements. And it all fits in an area of 1.2 by 1.5 uh, meters. 
uh, more complex system layout here. Uh, so you can have this two measurements, uh, at, measure at two wavelength ranges. One is half, half uh, visible to near infrared, so up to 2.6 micron. And this, or actually up to 1.6, and this one is uh, from 1.6 up to like you know, 10 microns or 15 microns, with, it uses uh, different detectors, single point detectors. Uh, the laser and the one RPA sit somewhere there on this table side. Then you also split some of the power to generate, a, to have a second RPA, which is used for the, mainly for the infrared. Uh, and you have this uh, nice system enabling you to measure events uh, in a very broad spectrum. Uh, how more complex, even more complex system looks like is shown here. So we have the laser, we have femtosecond RPA called Orpheus HP. Uh, and then we also have this uh, picosecond RPA. So we have this uh, in a terbium line and also in a titanium sapphire line, you can generate a picosecond uh, from the femtoseconds. Yeah, so you can make the shorter bandwidth uh, RPA. And then we have this third beam, which, it, which has a separate chopper, separate delay line, polarization controller, a main Harpia TA module, Harpia TF for the fluorescence, and external spectrograph. Yeah. Uh, what we haven't uh, talked much about is uh, probe generation and, and, and the spectrum of the Probe. So there are several options how to do it inside of Harpia. So firstly, we use a 1030 laser. Uh, so for fundamental, it generates wavelength from 460 to 1.6 micron. And if we want to reach UV, we generate second harmonic inside of the Harpia. And then the probe starts at 350 nanometers. And with titanium sapphire systems, it's a little bit easier because we can use uh, calcium fluoride to generate continuum and the wavelength is also 800 nanometer is, is shorter wavelength. So it allows uh, continuum from 330 to 1.4 uh, micrometers. And then the fourth option is if that's not enough, you can have, you can have it like a third, um, another OPA and you can generate continuum from an OPA or use this uh, single wavelength to, to probe your sample. Uh, some of the example spectrums shown here. So you can see this, uh, this is a typical graph which we add to every Harpia and it's measured in our factory and also at a uh, customer's place. So you can see that the spectrum Start here and then goes starts at around 340 or 300 and goes up to 1.4, emitting the gap at which the laser seeds the continuum because you have to reject it since you would have too many lights from yeah, fundamental. Um, another example here if there are some nice detectors in the near infrared, which you can use up to 2.6 micron. Uh, but to generate, but you do not have an uh, easily accessible probe up to 2.6 micron. So you, you would have to use um, another OPA, uh, say like in this example, an OPA centered at uh, two micron uh, to generate uh, continuum. And then you can have this broadband probe and do fast measurements in the infrared. Yeah, and then the third example is, uh, a fundamental from Ethereum line. Uh, so it starts at, at longer wavelengths. It also goes up to longer wavelengths as well. But then when we generate second harmonic, we can go to say like 330 or so. Um, Harpia also 
Standard Harpy includes uh, polarization control, uh, which is fully automated. So you can control the polarization of your pump beam by direct compensator. It also has the automated uh, sample translation stage, and you can control intensity uh, of the pump, of the probe, and of the signal to make sure your measurement is smooth. Uh, the sample area is around 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. You can add the solid state or liquid samples, uh, transmission or reflection geometries. The ley line is a mechanical line. Uh, there are few two retro reflectors uh, where the light bounces back and forth of them. And this way you can reach up to eight nanoseconds. Some additional add-ons for the labs which do want to play as little with the lasers as possible. So we can add some automation. Uh, for instance, here is a motorized uh, pump mirror. When you have some signal, you can uh, maximize it, uh, not by opening the OPA, but automatically in the software uh, with this motorized pump mirror. Uh, another uh, add-on is uh, active beam stabilization. It sits, uh, it sits externally, so you can stabilize your, uh, if you know that your laser beam is not uh, very directionally stable, you can optimize your laser fundamental. You can also optimize the beam direction from the OPAs, which is kind of a nice thing to do if you have the space and if you do not, if you want like the system to be more automated. So it includes uh, uh, two uh, motorized uh, mirrors and two quadrant detectors to detect uh, beam position at the near field and at the far field. Uh, you can also have the sample area uh, add-ons like a cryostat, so you can fit a small cryostat inside of the sample area, and then you can measure uh, at your sample at low temperatures. And also, we have this uh, sample stirrer to make sure that you are constantly pumping sample at, uh, in a new uh, space and your like sample is stirred. If that's not enough, you can, there's some additional port uh, which you can see uh, in the video uh, for which you can add your customizations like uh, peristaltic pump if you need it. We supply the system with the control software. It has friendly user interface to control the laser, the OPA, and the spectrograph. Also, there are some examples how to integrate it with the LabVIEW or MATLAB. Uh, so it's uh, very user configurable. And then the second software is for data analysis. So you can do advanced data manipulation like slicing, merging, cropping, fitting uh, the curves. And so you can do the data analysis in this uh, software. Yeah, so I'm going closer to an end. And then I will try to show you this video which uh, didn't show up. So we have this. Uh, uh, success stories and highlights. So the samples, the curves which I showed you uh, were like some simple things which are easy for us to measure and uh, because of accessibility and we do this to test uh, our system, to test the new development. And here you can see some publications done with, the, with our system. So you can see this photoluminescence of quantum dot measured. Uh, it uh, was done by using two methods. One was uh, time correlated single photon counting for measuring uh, long time events. And then the other one was measured by the up conversion to register a short time event. Uh, another method, nice uh, publication is uh, transient absorption of perovskites. And you can see this uh, nice uh, variations, nice dynamics in, in measured with the 
with our system. So we also have a toolbox easy in our website, easily to convert uh, like uh, probe energy in electrovolts to nanometers or to uh, wave numbers. Uh, you can also find, uh, if you go to our website, if you go to applications, you can search publications uh, or just like mark some devices of ours and then search the publications. So it's a, quite a large uh, publication database, which we are updating based on our customers' uh, papers. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, what was not mentioned is that uh, like, if you have some doubts whether you need the system or not, whether it will work or how much energy will you need. So you can send us your samples to us. We have this uh, system running. Uh, we're constantly developing new features. So you can we can measure your sample uh, if you just yeah, want it. Okay, and so now I will probably try to show you this. Uh, I will stop sharing and I will try to show you the video which uh, was not shown for some reason, didn't show up. And then we can, or in the meantime, we can also go to questions. Okay. Uh, so, so. Yeah, we can check if we can answer quickly some questions, and then we can go to the videos as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Please yes. So thank you, Vaidatas, uh, for such a stimulating presentation. We appreciate you making your time in your busy schedule to speak here today and share knowledge about commercial um, fine, um, femtosecond pump probe spectroscopy solutions. So we'll take some question from our um, audience. So first question is from, um, so first question is from Dr. Shubhamoy. Okay, so he wanted to understand um, how, the, how the change in absorption is measured in TAS uh, using a spectrograph. Um, is it just the difference between the probe and the reference or it is measured during the modulation technique no it's just the difference of the ground state and the excited state so it's just a difference of two measured spectrum because we have this continuum which is uh, from the second generated continuum is very stable uh, in addition to that we measure this uh, stability of the continuum we account for that we just compare the two data and then we have the difference in absorption. So it's measured by a regular uh, NMOS uh, camera, like linear detector, with it, which is really okay. common. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you so much, thank you. So second is from uh, Dr. Shu, uh, Shubhangi uh, Majundar. So she wanted to, to know uh, for a TAS, set up how to improve the sing, uh, signal to noise ratio apart from increasing the integration time for a sample having low concentration and burning issues. Mm -hmm. How to increase the signal to noise? Yes, uh, yes, yes. How yeah, to so this I probably I cannot answer now it would be better to check in, in the email to to know more about the system but uh, yeah if, if the sample for instance uh, scatters a lot so you can probably add the say polarizer to reject some of the some of the pump beam if it's uh, polluting your measurement so this or you can play with the filters maybe you can also adjust these uh, intensities of, of the pump of the pole beam and then you can uh, try to find the optimal uh, regime for for your measurement but in general if if you have like a stable continuum uh, yeah that's 
pretty much it. Like you just need, need to be sure that your continuum is, is very uh, stable. So you can, uh, what we do is we measure this spectrally integrated reference of the continuum. Uh, yeah. And this helps to increase signal to noise ratio. Okay, okay, okay. Um, thank you, thank you. And um, our third question is uh, from our third question is from Doctor um, E Doctor Karas. So he was asking twenty microjoule for WLG sounds uh, quite a lot. What kind of focusing you are using? Yeah, 20 microjoules is a lot, but we are using metal mirrors, so they are quite lossy. from Dr. Salauddin Khan from um, Arakat. So he wants to uh, speak to you directly. So Dr. Uh, Salauddin Khan, can you uh, ask your question? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Can you listen to me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, thanks uh, the sales team from uh, Light Conversion. So my question is that uh, in transient absorption, what is the mag minimum changes you can measure? 10 to four minus six, is it possible? Minus five, minus yeah. six? Change? Yeah. It's possible, probably, yeah, roughly around that. Yeah, with the, you can see it in the, it's in the micro OD. Okay, okay. So means you have to increase the averaging kind of thing or how do you approach it? Because it's that, that much yeah. changes we need to make out in time domain because we are not working in frequency domain. Like people work in lock-in and those techniques. So then we can measure easily minus five, minus six. So here means what is the time order we are talking about? How many averages we have to take? Yeah, so I showed one graph where we measured one time point in 13 seconds. So laser was working at 100 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's roughly the idea. So is there any option of putting magnetic field also in your any of the setup? Magnetic field attachment. The magnetic filter attachments, you mean that just to filter some of the... Five Tesla or one Tesla something we can put and do the measurements, similar measurement? Uh, no, the sample area is uh, quite limited. It's 20 by 20 centimeters. So to do this, you would need to have your beam externally. We have this option. So we deliver the pump and probe beams via uh, construct a, a ramp to external area, then you can have your sample area as, as, as big as you want and, and as, as complex as you want. Mm -hmm. And then we can also help you, like if it's not too big, we can help you to collect the data from the sample area to the spectrograph. But mm -hmm. if you're good at uh, lasers and understand the optics, you can also do it yourself. So but this, in, oh, yeah, okay. In one of the setup, you are talking about low temperature measurement also. So is it possible to uh, put a superconducting magnet along with that uh, low temperature setup itself, something very small? Because that you are talking about, how, how low it can go? It's just like we do not uh, do this in measurements. It's end user customizations. So we only add yeah. the adapter, which is uh, actually adapter translatable in the focus uh, yeah, in, in the focus axis. And you do with your sample area whatever you want to do. So if this fits inside, yeah, then you can measure it. But we do not do such measurements. In one of the setup, you talked about active beam alignment. One uh, piezo base that, uh, uh, what I said, mirror mount was there in which you can realign the pump or probe beam according to our need. 
So when we change the wavelength, like when we use OPA or something, when we change the wavelength, sometimes it gets misaligned. So what about that focusing place? Sometimes focusing place change. How do you counter that? So sometimes when you go from 400 nanometer to maybe 700 nanometer or 600, the focusing point changes because lens we are not going to change. So yeah. will it matter yeah. or uh, we'll go like that only and signal will... What no, do we, we do not... We do not uh, worry about that. What we do is we focus the uh, focus the pump behind the sample, so the focus is uh, larger than our the pump beam is larger than our probe beam. Probe beam. So, okay. so the beam is like the area is around 150 microns or so for the mm -hmm. pump, and the probe beam is like 30 to 70. Okay, so microns. ratio is. Okay, so at least, so that will be covered. Even if it becomes 70 micron, it will be covered in that 150 micron. Okay. So. Yeah, if you do microscopy type, so yeah, if you do tighter focus, then you need to compensate it. And we have this um, microscopy module. And then we have, the, there's an option to add uh, objective on a translation stage. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not automatic, actually. It's it's. Okay. Uh, so it is not your standard catalog product, that microscopy module? Yes, it's a standard, uh, also a standard catalog module, but the standard module. So What's there's the a What's uh, the micro model? Yeah, microscopy mode, Harpia MM. So it's uh, what it has. It has the bulk module and microscopy module. They're both fitted in the sample area. So what you do is you do the microscopy measurements, then you take out uh, yeah, the microscopy module mm -hmm. and add bulk module. It limits the, the, the space a little bit, but yeah, you can uh, see it in the website. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So we Thanks can we can arrange that uh, module details to be sent to you, sir. This is Jagdish yeah. here, uh, okay. Dr. Saladin, sir. We will send you those information to you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. So finally, um, Dr. Polas Rai. So he wanted to understand uh, what is the tunability of a pump. In light conver uh, it uh, up conversion or care getting experiments. Yeah, so pump beam, uh, both of the measurements doesn't uh, limit the pump beam. You can use whatever pump beam you want to use it. Also, we use this uh, metallic uh, mirrors in the pump beam path. So, if you prefer pumping with the UV, we would add UV enhanced. Uh, optics, if it's pumped with the visible or the infrared, we would add uh, probably gold mirrors or so to deliver the pump beam to the sample, if I understood the question uh, correctly. Yeah, I think that's a very uh, detailed description. Pinaki, I think uh, yeah. uh, it's already more than one hour and 45 minutes. Yes. So. Uh, probably we should have more questions, Vaditas. We will send you those informations by email. Okay. Uh, it's a very fantastic presentation. I will ask Pinaki to give the word of thanks and to all the participants today. Yeah. Okay. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, Vaditas uh, for such an informative session. It's really kind of you to accept our request and take the session. Uh, which required you a lot of time and energy to prepare material for the presentation. Um, we hope everyone attended the meeting would be able to carry their information useful to them in their um, respective fields. Uh, thank you once again, everyone, for attending the webinar. Um, I have come across, um, I, I, I think everyone has uh, the link for participant cert participation certificate. And uh, the participant certificate will be shared by you through email. If you have further queries, feel free to uh, contact us as sales at the date lasersigns.in. And uh, hope to see you in another day with another session. With this note, we'd like to wind up this session. Uh, thanks again, everyone from Laser Science family. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We will we'll, like, wait for your questions. Sure. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks.